Hey now, just a quick tip on showing how I create new objects in an Atmos session when I need to create a new path from beginning to end. This should be much simpler. Unfortunately, currently, as of March 13th, 2022, it's still pretty tedious. And I'm going to show you how my workflow is to make it as fast as possible. If there's a faster way, I'd love to hear it, but this is the fastest way I've been able to discover how to do it. Okay, first and foremost, I never have the renderer sitting out in front of me when I'm working. I work in Pro Tools, so I'm always having my Pro Tools out front and my renderer is stuffed off somewhere else. So I, and I don't want to have to go menu diving into the renderer. I want to do everything within Pro Tools. Because guess what? It's here when I'm having the inspiration. It's like, oh, you know what I could really use? Another stereo object. Let me go ahead and create it. So unlike creating a stereo track, which is what we're going to do, because that's what we're going to do for this, uh, you can create the track and then just decide, okay, I'm going to call this stereo DX object uh, three. Okay. Now I have a track and I could even route it to my 50 DX uh, bus. And there I have audio, but I want it to be an object. And uh, so if I pull this down, I realize, okay, I don't have any available objects. Uh, so I need to create a new object. Okay. So how do I do that? Well, it's essential that you have this plugin, the Dolby Atmos Binaural Settings plugin, instantiated somewhere in your session. I stick it on a instrument track at the top of the session, which I minimize and uh, keep out of my way. And I create a shortcut so I can open this plugin whenever I need it. And as long as it's connected to the renderer, it can give you access to some uh, key features that speeds up this workflow a bit. It's a little deceiving because you think this is just about the binaural settings, and it certainly is, but you can group assets according to which stem group you would like them to belong to. You can write a little description in, you can change the binaural settings, but you can also change the assignment, whether it's a channel or an object. And you can do that for all 130 objects or 128 objects. So now that I have a channel and I've decided I need a stereo object, here's the process I would go through with that plugin instantiated. I would open it. I would find two objects, open objects that I need one for each channel in the stereo object. In this case, we'll choose 126 and 127. I'm gonna group these as dialogue objects. And I'll just change, since I'm here, I can do this, I'm just gonna change those to there. So now the renderer is open on those two inputs saying you can put an object here. Unfortunately, Pro Tools can't get to that yet because we haven't linked it. And so you do that in the Pro Tools IO setup window. And I would advise having a shortcut to this window because you're gonna need it a lot working in Atmos. So in order to get an output from Pro Tools to the renderer, we actually need to create an output pathway. So we're gonna do a new path. It's a stereo path. And let's call it the same thing I called my track, stereo object three. Uh, by default, Pro Tools will stick this at the very bottom. I like to keep things sequential, so I move it there. And it also puts the outputs in the next available slots. But we told the renderer it's gonna be out here on 126 and 127, so I have to slide those over. Now, if I close out here, uh, Pro Tools will have an output, but it won't be linked, it won't be mapped to the renderer yet. So we need to go to the bus page before we leave here and go all the way down to the bottom. And here's the new pathway that we just created. And you can see it right there. This is going to that output, but we need it to get to the renderer itself. So I'd like to drag these up and keep them all in the same spots. So all my mapping to my renderer is in the same location and all my internal busing is below that. So I don't mix them up and just open this up assign these two objects to the renderer there, 126, 127, they're the dialog group. Boom, get out of this. And now, and only now, can I come in here and say, oh, there's an object, and just click it on, and now I have my object. And that's the fastest way I know of how to do this. If you know of a faster way, it'd be great. Ideally, in the future, when you open a new track, you get to choose your width, you get to choose your type, and in this case, you would say, uh, object. I want to create one mono object. And then here would be maybe, uh, you know, which input on the renderer do you want? 127. What group should it belong to? Dialogue. Uh, what's the binaural render settings? Near. Create. Like that would be great to have this all right here. And then that just happens. So I wouldn't have to be fussing with this window or fussing with this guy. Um, you know, the binaural render settings. Like if, if they could get that coordinated, that would be amazing. Uh, but right now, all these steps are what's required to make a new um, object track in an existing Atmos session that doesn't already have it, a pathway linked up.